in the past six weeks, I've learned to really appreciate people, understand that we're all here for a purpose. And I've really uh, learned to have sympathy for people, just appreciate what they do and why they're here. Um, I just felt like I've become more intentional with uh, hanging out with my friends and like starting to share my faith with them more, telling them more about what I'm doing, uh, getting more involved uh, with the church, with uh, volunteering, and um, getting involved with community groups and things like that, the dinner group. So it's just been a, a transformation in my own life to uh, start to give back again. Um, what I've learned through uh, walking through Purpose Shift in Life has been that you really only grow when you give. That the more that we serve God, the more that we make ourselves available to His will in our lives. Um, not only the better off that we are, but the more that others um, are able to embrace um, and get to know God. So I've been in dinner groups for 11 years and they've always been really important and valuable in my life. And I don't know that I've always understood what makes it so special, but one of the things that's really helped through this series is how uh, Pastor Rick was sharing inside of Purpose Driven Life, how um, time is a resource that all of us have the equal amount of, and that um, when we give it away, it's something that is equal value to everyone. And so when we give away our time to each other, it's just so valuable because there's a limited amount of it. And so like that time can't go to someplace else because you decided on Monday night at 8 p.m. to spend an hour and a half with some other men. And so that has been extremely valuable in this series that like I now value and appreciate about others in our community. All right, the way God has moved into my life is the last couple of weeks, I've seen my, heart, my husband's heart soften and open to be so warm and caring and has made my family so much closer and more a living more purposely. We're finding our gifts and we're starting to use them. So he's doing miracles and, and giving us so many blessings that um, we're so grateful. Well, good morning, good morning, good morning. Last week, I asked you to go and just share one line of how God has been impacting you. And so many of you did that. Well, you went and shared. You didn't share one line. It, it, it seems that it got a few more lines than that, but it, it was really powerful to be able to hear all those stories. And I'm going to give you a chance to be able to hear a few more of those as we make our way through the day today. But before we go any further, one of the things that I've recognized and I recognized early on in the first service is it's rainy and it's kind of miserable out there and you guys have no energy. Uh, I, 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 all day I've been experiencing this. The energy is so low and we need to bring the energy up because when you have no energy, it's really hard for me to have energy and I want for us to celebrate together today. So what I want for you to do really quickly is just stand up and give someone a high five, just a high five. Excellent. Okay, stop. All right, that's good. I I do that for two reasons. One, for you to be able to, for us to get our energy up, but, but also it's just so amusing to me how bad you are at giving high fives. <laughs> but as we come together today, we do, we want to celebrate, we want to celebrate all that God's been doing in our church family over the past six weeks. If you haven't been with us, we've been asking this question, what am I here for? And God has just been working and moving in some really, really powerful ways. And, and it's amazing. It's only been seven weeks. And for some of us, our lives are drastically different than they were seven weeks ago. It, it's, it's phenomenal what God's Done. I want to give you a chance to be able to hear just a few more of those one-line stories. So check this out. So um, I've been leading a group over the past six weeks. And for me, it's just really been having my eyes open even more to um, how God can share, how God can use me to share his love around the community. So 
I feel like my desire for showing his love has grown, whether it's like as I take my kids to school, having the desire to talk more with the crossing guard or seeing the homeless lady that I always pass by on the way to church on Sundays. He just continues to grow my heart for others around me. Um, I think that it was a great journey for me to go on a second time. It's giving me a deeper foundation in uh, Christ and God's Word, and I am just so grateful to be part of this, this group and this, uh, this church. Uh, over the course of the Purpose Driven Life series, I feel like I've, I've grown a lot and I've learned to bring worship into every aspect of my life, whether it be at work, at the house, or hanging out with friends. So it's been definitely very powerful. So many more of my friends are serving now than before the Purpose series. I'm so excited to see how God is impacting their lives through serving. Uh, God has blessed us with a new dinner group and we've been able to love Him and love all these new people in an Amplifier Church family. So what God's been teaching me through this series is that even though things might be crazy out there, God still has a purpose in everything that's going on right now and He still deeply has created us to be part of that purpose and really wants us to be uh, part of that and our hope shouldn't be in things that are, you know, going out on outside or anything in politics or anything in the news, but it should be in God. Did you guys celebrate that? <laughs> I've actually asked Anthony if he would come and just thank God for what he has been doing and is doing inside of our lives. Anthony? Awesome. Will you guys pray with me? Father, uh, first and foremost, thank you. We are just so encouraged by not only these stories, and we're thankful for these stories. We're thankful for uh, those who shared their stories with us, but we're also thankful for the stories we haven't heard, the stories that we're going to hear. And Father, we are also thankful for the stories that we're not going to hear, because we know that it's even proof that even, even, even if we don't hear the stories, you're still moving and you're still working. And, you, and, and, and it's incredible to see that over the past seven weeks, People are taking steps of faith. People are taking steps of faith that they never thought they would have taken. People are, are coming to know who you are. People are coming back to know who you are. And people who have been on this journey with you for a while are just coming to, to, to uncover new truths and, 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 and new things about you. And, and it's exciting. It's exciting to know that no matter how long you've been on, that we've been on this journey with you, that you're still revealing new things to us which can only mean one thing, that more things are going to be revealed to us, and, and we're just excited to continue to celebrate and to see what you're going to do. Father, thank you for your son. Thank you for all of the people that you've brought to be a part of this journey with us. We don't take it lightly, and again, we thank you, we celebrate you, and we can't wait to see what you're going to do. And it's in your son's name we pray. Amen. Amen. And as we come together today, we, we want to celebrate all, all day. And we, and we want to remember, because, because here's the thing, we have, a, we have a problem. You see, we have this tendency to just move past what God's done. We, we, have, we have this tendency to just, to just move on. And, and, and we have another problem, which is that we, we forget and oftentimes we don't think very much about this, but it's interesting how God interacts with us about this because one of the things that God is constantly coming to us with as you look at the scriptural narrative and you look at God's pursuit of us, one of the things that he's saying to us over and over again is remember, remember, remember because God knows we have a problem. I always talk about it in terms of disability. My, my, my second son has Down syndrome, and so it's kind of been interesting how that has changed, how I interact with the idea of disability. And oftentimes I'll hear people talk about disabilities, like there are people who have disabilities and then people who don't. But what I've learned in life is that the reality is all of us have disabilities. It's just that some of those disabilities are shared by all of us, so we think they're normal. And, and that's, that's, what, that's the way it is with the fact that we forget. We all forget, so we think, well, that's normal. But God doesn't think that's normal. As a matter of fact, God thinks that's a problem. And so he's constantly coming to us and saying, you need to remember. You need to remember. You need to remember because I know this about you. You're going to forget. 
And so he's constantly calling us to remember what he's done, to remember how he's worked. And we want to do that today. It's interesting, inside of couples counseling, one of the, one of the really powerful practices that, that counselors use is that as the couple sits down with a the counselor, they'll ask them every time, okay, I want for you to share something that you appreciate about your spouse. And it's really powerful, not just because of the fact that you're able to hear that from your spouse, but it's really powerful because it forces you to remember what you appreciate about your spouse. Because you know what? You forget that you appreciate your spouse. And it's really powerful to to be in that moment of remembering, no, wait a second, I do appreciate my spouse. It's not all bad because you you forget. And we have a, we have a problem. We, we tend to just move past things and we forget. It's really interesting. It's really interesting. Jesus, as, he, as he's leading his followers, he doesn't give to them a lot of rituals or routines. As a matter of fact, there's really only one specific thing that he calls them to do on a routine basis, a, a ritual, if, if you will. Something he says, I want for you to practice this over and over and over and over again. And, and that practice is based around and is for the purpose of remembering. He says, the one thing that I'm going to give you, the one thing that I want you to practice time after time after time, is I want for you to remember. Let, let, me take you to, let me take you to the passage where we see this in Corinthians. And Paul's talking about what Jesus had shared with him about the command or the, or the practice that he gave to his followers. Listen to what it says. It says, For I received from the Lord what I also passed on to you. The Lord Jesus, on the night he was betrayed, took bread, and when he had given thanks, he broke it and said, This is my body, which is for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same way, after supper, he took the cup, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood. Do this whenever you drink it in remembrance of me. For whenever you eat this bread and drink this cup, you proclaim the Lord's death until he comes. And this is really the only time, the only time where you see Jesus giving to his disciples a ritual or routine that he wants for them to practice. And it's amazing, isn't it? That, that it's all about what? It's about remembering. Because he knows, he knows that we have this tendency to just move on. We have this tendency to forget what it is that he's done. And so he says, I want for you to stop And remember. And as, as we come together, as we come together today, we want to make sure that we don't just move past it. We want, we want to make sure that we stop and remember. I want to give you the chance to hear a couple more of the stories of how God's been working and moving inside of our family. Check this out. I think it's really cool to see that God can move in different directions and what you thought was your purpose uh, to find something completely different out of it. Um, To be able to realize that God is moving through his love to push you somewhere else. Um, And I've been able to see that in the girls that I'm in dinner group with and even in my own life and just see how God has called them in different ways. And uh, the series has just been so wonderful to reaffirm some people's purposes and totally change the rest of them. The most impactful part of the past few weeks is when Pastor Chris talked about finding your giftedness in community. For the longest time, I've been asking, what's my purpose here? You know, what does God want from me? And I've realized over the past few weeks that for me, it's really serving. Um, It's giving up my time. It's being here on Sundays. It's just such a joy um, that I feel that I can't even describe. Probably six weeks ago, I realized that I was pretty overwhelmed in where I was in my career, but God just really reaffirms where I am and that I can continue to love those that I work with. And that's been the most exciting thing in my journey yet. Uh, So one of the things we learned over the course of the series is that uh, God plays the long game, that we might have our own plans and timelines that we want things to work on, but uh, ultimately it's his plan that will play out. The uh, last six weeks have helped us invest more in our church family, our, our insular family, as well as our dinner group family. 
I learned that God is not a part of my life, but rather that my life is a part of his bigger plan. My one thing I've learned the past six weeks is that God has people for me to love, and these are my people. Did you guys celebrate that with me? We're going to post these online. If you want to do something really fun, watch what's happening in the background. There's some really funny things happening in the background of these videos. There's a mom looking for her child frantically. There, there, there's someone trying to find a cell phone. It's, it's amazing. It's like a Where's Waldo game in the back of those videos. But it's just, it's, it's amazing. You see all these different ways that God's working and moving and, and, and people who are at all these different places on their journey. And God is just leading us, faithfully leading us forward. And God says, don't forget that. Don't just move past it. I want for you to remember. Remember, I want you to remember what I've done. I don't want you to forget how I love you. I don't want you to forget all that I'm doing. I want for you to remember. And so he, he calls us. He says, he says, this is my body, which is for you. Do this in remembrance of me. And then he says, this cup is the new covenant in my blood. Do this whenever you drink it in remembrance of me. He says, I want you to do this over and over again. And some of you have walked in and you heard us talk about communion and we have the tables around the room where there's the cup and the bread and you say, what is this all about? It's about remembering. It's about making sure that we don't forget how good God is. And the circumstances of life can so easily rob that, us of that and, and we can begin to, to lose sight of that. And so Jesus says, not just, not just occasionally, but consistently, I want for you to remember, which is why I... I want to invite you, if you haven't before, to make sure that you, that you take time during our services. It's open all throughout the service. You can come in beforehand and, and remember. You can come in at, at any point during the service. You can get up and go and remember. As we walk through the day, we want to specifically call you to that. But I want, if you haven't begun to make that a consistent practice in your life, I want to invite you into that. Why? Because we have to remember what God's done. He says, I want you to remember how my, how my body was broken for you. That he was broken so that we could be made whole. And for so many of you, as, you, as you've walked through the past couple, couple of weeks, you're experiencing him making you, you whole. You're discovering what your purpose is. He says, I want for you to remember that my blood was shed for you so that you could be made clean, so that you could be forgiven. For some of you, over the past six weeks, for the first time, you've embraced God's love. And you, you've embraced that, no, it doesn't start with me loving him. It starts with me being loved by him. And you've embraced, you've embraced that love that's only possible because Jesus gave his life. For us to be able to step, Hebrews, Hebrews says we can step directly into God's presence without any fear, without any hesitation because of what Jesus did for us on that cross. How his body was broken for us, how his blood was shed for us. He says, I want for you to remember. As he continues in that passage, it's interesting because he calls us to do something else as we remember as well. As he continues, he says, he says this. He says, a man ought to examine himself before he eats of the bread and drinks of the cup. He says, I want for you to remember. I want you to remember what I've done. I want you to remember how I've moved. I want you to remember how I've loved. And I, and I want for you to remember, too, who you are. I want for you to examine yourself. Now, it's interesting. I grew, I grew up sometimes hearing this taught that you needed to examine yourself before you took the Lord's Supper or communion, which is what this, this practice is called. It, he said, oftentimes, I was taught you need to examine yourself to figure out if you've, if you've lived well enough that week to be able to do that. In other words, you have to examine yourself and figure out if you're good enough in order to be able to take that cup and take that bread. You have to examine yourself to figure out whether you've earned that cup and that bread. That goes against everything that Jesus taught us. That goes against the table itself. It goes against what that cup and that bread represent. When he's talking about examining yourself, he's saying you need to examine yourself and recognize that none of us are good enough to take it. 
You need to examine yourself and realize that you've never earned it. The crazy, the crazy thing about the idea that I was good enough is that, that we would ever think that we lived a week good enough to be able to have earned it or deserve it. There's not a week of my life, not a week of our lives that, we, that we've earned it or deserve it. He says, I want you to exam- examine yourself so that you recognize you don't belong at the table, but you're still invited. I want for you to remember. I want you to remember my love. I want to remember what I've done. I want you to remember how I'm, how I'm moving. And then I want you to remember it's not because you earned it. And then I want you to remember that you don't deserve it. Which is really important because some of you are here and you've been on this journey and you're like, I don't know. I don't know if God would really welcome me. I, I, don't, I don't know if this is really for me. L- listen to me. Listen to me. It doesn't matter who you are. It doesn't matter where you've been. It doesn't matter what you've done. Jesus did this for you. And he's inviting you to the table. And he's inviting you in, into his family. And this practice of remembrance, it's a constant reminder that none of us earned it. And none of us deserved it but because of the fact that his body was broken and because of the fact that he gave his life, his blood was shed, because of that, we're welcome. And for some of you, today is the day that you need to, for the first time, accept that invitation. And make no mistake mistake about it. God's not gonna force himself on you. He doesn't force anyone to be part of his family. As Jesus addresses his followers, the thing that he says over and over again is, come follow me. It's an invitation. Come follow me. And he invites us into that. He's not going to force you But Romans is really clear. Romans is really clear. It says, he says that if you confess with your mouth that Jesus is Lord and believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, you will be saved. He says, no, no, this isn't about what you, how you earn it. He says, no, if you just, if you will accept what he's done for you, the fact that his body was broken for you, the fact that he gave his life for you, If you'll accept that, you're welcome into the family. You're welcome at the table. And for some of you, today's the day that you need to accept that invitation. And to understand this, to understand this, that God is waiting with his arms open wide. One of the things that I love is a couple weeks ago, we shared the story of Jason and Carolina and how they adopted their son, and, and inside that story, my favorite part of the story is when that little boy is running to her and she's got her arms wide open. And I just love that moment and that story because it's such an amazing picture of exactly what God wants for you. And he's like, I'm here with my arms wide open. If you would just run to me, if you just accept my invitation, my arms are wide open and I wanna be able to wrap you up in a hug. I want for you. to know home, to come home. And for some of you, you've been walking, walking through this and, and you've been exploring what it's about. Today's, today's your day to come home. To accept the invitation to the table. And it's as simple as exactly what you saw in Romans, that if you confess... No, God, I I accept what you've done for me. I didn't earn it. I wasn't good enough. I accept that your body was broken for me, that your blood was shed for me so that I could be made clean, that I could be forgiven, that I could be adopted into your family. 
I want to be yours. As we come together today, we want to celebrate, we want to remember what God's done. I want to invite all of us into that. We need to make sure we don't forget. In just a moment, I'm going to give you a little bit of time just to right where you are to remember. To remember what he's done, the way that he's loved you. To examine yourself. To remember, (laughs) there's, there's no way I'm good enough. And then as the band comes back for us to be able to celebrate, to celebrate all that he's been doing, all that he's, he's currently doing, all, all that he's made possible. And for us to go and to take the cup and to take the bread and to remember. But first, I want to give you a chance to just right where you are, to think through your story. And maybe last week you shared that story, or maybe you've just been kind of moving on, and you haven't taken that time to to remember. I'm just going to give you 30 seconds. I'm going to stop talking and give you a chance right where you are, bow your head, and just remember all that God's doing in your life, the reality that you don't deserve it. For those of you who've never accepted that invitation, for you right now, to bow your head and say, I want to be yours. I want to be adopted by you. I trust that you did this for me. I'm just going to give you 30 seconds. As the band comes up, I want to invite you to celebrate with us, to celebrate him. I want to invite you as well to make your way to the tables around the room and to remember that we who did not belong have been welcomed into his family, that Jesus made all that possible, and to celebrate, to celebrate the fact that you are welcome at his table. Father, we are so incredibly grateful for all that you're doing, all that you have done. Father, we never want to forget that. It's unbelievable that you put so much priority on remembering. And we want to embrace that. We want to prioritize that as well. And so we do not just move on from what you've done, but we want to stay. We want to sit with that and remember just how great you are. In Jesus' name, amen.